Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Bernina Besties. I'm Adrienne Gallagher, a product educator at Bernina of Canada. So we're glad to have you back here again. Today's topic is embroidering with cork. So here are some ideas that I've had recently with cork. Um, if you didn't know, there is a fabric available um, in cork. And it's really easy to sew and embroider with. That's the secret. It's really, really great to sew and embroider with. I think we've talked about sewing with cork before. So we're going to focus mostly on embroidering with cork today. But uh, I thought I would bring you some ideas of things you can embroider. Um, I really enjoy tags, luggage tags. This is one of the first things I ever embroidered. I've actually had this for about six years now, and it's on some beautiful gold flecked cork. And it's got an embroidered A on it and an embroidered eyelet, top stitching. This is all done in the embroidery hoop. And on this side, it's got my business card and there's actually a vinyl pocket here. This is by Pickle Pie Designs pickle pie designs and it's called monogrammed luggage tags and you get the whole set and I just love making these I have made these for Christmas and just given everybody a luggage tag on a bottle of wine and that's been a very popular popular gift so tags are really great um, OESD has some great designs for embroidery on cork one of them that I've really been doing a lot of is this keychain design the collection I think is called boutique uh, key chains or key tags and it's just a really beautiful mysterious kind of collection and it's a really pretty cork key tag that I have all done in the embroidery hoop this will fit in the smallest of hoops a four by four hoop um, so will the luggage tags those will fit in a four by four hoop for sure and then recently I've been trying some new things. So I tried this cool wallet, tapestry wallets on the OESD uh, website. Just look up cork wallet on embroidery online. And this really nice collection pops up. They've got flat wallets and they've got folded wallets. So this is such a nice product uh, project when you're done, you've got the embroidery on the outside and you can customize the colors however you want. You can customize the cork fabric, and we'll talk about cork fabric in a moment. And then on the inside, you get a little pop of uh, some hidden fabric here. And these fit gift cards and credit cards and my fabric bill card just perfectly. So that is the wallets. And then this is the flat, the flat um, style. Really cute. This cork has some silver flex in it because I just love bling. And this one fits my business cards really well. So this is going to be in my beautiful um, fanny pack. And I'm going to have my business cards on me all the time. And they're easy to grab out of that project. So those, again, are from Embroidery Online. Um, easy to find. And then um, this is a notebook cover done in cork. So this is really a beautiful cover. Again, a nice collection from Embroidery Online. The whole thing is created in the hoop. There's no sewing here as well. This is all done completely in the hoop. Same as the little wallets I was showing you. And um, the great thing about cork is you don't need to fold the edges under. You can leave the edges raw like this. So it makes for really quick projects, not too bulky because the fabric is thick. So you don't want to have all those layers there. So you can just leave them flat and leave the edge raw. And you get a really nice crisp edge because you cut it with your rotary trimmer and it looks really great. This design is really exciting because you've got a little bit of reverse applique here. So you get to learn a new technique if you try this project. And there are several designs and several sizes because you need a hoop large enough to accommodate the project flat like this. This is how it's sewn embroidered together. So very fun project. I enjoyed making that up. Uh, takes about uh, an hour with thread changes, I would say. It's a pretty great project. And then today, 
I decided I was going to make good on my promise to my dad and make him a cork wallet. And he, we were talking about maybe he wants a little monogram on it. Doesn't that look great with the monogram? He's going to love it. And um, inside you can see all the card pockets that we made because I don't know if your dad is the same as mine, but he has a bajillion um, cards to carry. Um, then there's the area for the bills. And in here, there's actually two secret pockets where, of course, he could put pictures of me and my kids. That would be really great. He could put that in there as well. And all of this folds together and that'll be perfect. And I loved this pattern so much. I made a second one for myself and I put a little A on it for me and I used blue cork, but I also grabbed some pattern cork and um, alternated the pockets with different colors. And that way it's a little bit more flashy for me. You know, I like sparkly, flashy different things. So this pattern is by an independent pattern maker. Um, it is called Sonar Sewing Patterns. I'll show you the pattern. It's called the Bifold Wallet by Sonar Patterns. And you can get that as a digital download. Or you could go to your local store and uh, see if they offer any sewing patterns for cork projects there. My next projects will be a bit larger because I'm going to expand into some bags by um, Uh Oh Creations, Tara Sinclair. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so I'm going to answer some of your questions about cork. And um, the real secret is that it's so easy to embroider and sew with. Uh, it looks very fancy um, and high end, but it's super easy. So cork fabric is just what it sounds like. It is a thin layer of cork applied to a uh, fabric backing. And there are different uh, uh, qualities, different qualities of cork. And my advice to you is buy the best one that you can find. The higher the quality, the longer it lasts. Uh, there's extra treatments to the cork to keep it lasting longer. It won't crack as much. The colors stay vibrant. Um, there's just so much great stuff about cork. So let me show you the two. I have two different kinds in my collection and I wanna show you the difference between the two. So here is, this is my favorite cork. This is by um, M M Cork Supply. I think I have a little. Here we go. M M Cork. That is a Canadian cork supplier, and you can find their products available at most fine quilt stores across Canada. I know a lot of Bernina dealerships carry the cork and you can get it just in small bits from your store rather than having to buy larger chunks right from MM. So I would recommend going to your store and asking them if they carry cork by MM Cork. And let me show you why. So this is one from MM Cork and it's lovely and thick and it's fused very nicely to the backing fabric. The backing fabric is really soft. So this is just acts sort of like denim. It's kind of thick like denim, but the needle goes through it very easily and it doesn't crack. This is actually conditioned with Scotch Guard before it comes to you. So it's just wipeable. So it makes really nice placemats, coasters, uh, fun things like that. And this is the other cork that I have that I don't like quite as much. It is a little bit thinner. And actually when I hold it up to the light, sometimes I can see through there's little holes in the cork. It's not solid like this one from MM. And if I hold them both up, you'll be able to see that this is actually quite a bit thinner, more like paper. And this is quite a bit thicker, more like canvas or denim. So uh, different qualities of cork are available. Um, I find the better ones are the thicker ones for me. I just find they last a lot longer. They don't split or... Um, wear as quickly. So I try to stick with this type of cork. Um, that's the one that I get from MM. I tend to buy natural colored cork, but then every now and then I like to experiment with some fancy colors. So you can get cork in lots of different colors. Here's a nice brown one and it's got some gold 
flex in it. Here is a burgundy one with some silver in it. I think I've got a black one. It's a little bit different format and it's got some silver in it. You can get some with prints on it. This is kind of a silver dot print. Oh, it feels so nice. It feels so smooth. I just I can't wait to sew with this one. I'm not sure what I'm going to make. Maybe a passport cover, I think. Um, natural is my favorite. I really love the natural one. This one has a little bit of a gold fleck in it. And that's what kind of adds a little bit of shimmer to projects like this. So this is uh, probably my go-to cork <laughs> is plain natural or natural with the gold fleck. And then I've got this one to try. I can't wait to try this one too. This has got a gold dot on it, but it's so flexible. It's easy to stitch through. I'm really looking forward to playing with this one as well. You can buy cork in small sample pieces like this. These are eight by 10 sample pieces. You can buy larger um, stores will carry rolls of it. So this was a roll um, that I purchased from at my local store. And I just purchased a, a large piece of this print. I can't, this is, I was gonna make my wallet out of this and I still can't bear to cut it. I think I wanna make a fanny pack out of this or like um, a messenger bag. So I think that's my next project. And uh, you don't wanna fold your cork. You don't wanna store it folded. You want to roll it to keep it nice and smooth and not get wrinkles in it. So I like to store mine like this with or without um, a tie on it or an elastic to hold it closed. And then um, I keep it out of the light at my house. Um, I'll show you how I like to store mine. It's over here. So I just use some magazine um, organizers at my house. I have two to hold my cork collection right now. I'm trying to keep it to two. It's very hard because the cork is so nice. So you can see I've got it rolled up and just placed in my magazine rack. And then it also conveniently holds the um, eight by 10 sample pack sheets. So I can just slide those in there. And I've got my rolls in here with or without an elastic on them. That works really well. And here's some more. So I've got my elastics on this one, or you could use a selvage or a piece of fabric to just hold them um, not too tight, but I just like that to hold them together. And then I wanted to show you that I keep all my teeny tiny pieces of cork because some of these are big enough to make a key tag and other ones I use for bags where I need to make like a little tab for a cord to go through. That's just a quick and easy tab to make. I don't have to fold the edges under or anything like that. Cork is just so great to work with. Um, so I keep all of those in a little Ziploc here and then I'm ready to use them for anything. When you are ready to sew your cork, you do not wanna put a pin in it, do you? Because the pins will leave uh, semi-permanent marks. The reason I say semi-permanent is I have sewn through cork and then taken the stitches out and then left it overnight and then I really couldn't see where the stitches were. So you don't want to use pins but you can use our favorite little wonder clips. Those work really well to hold the layers together um, before sewing or you can baste it together by uh, temporarily gluing it together with something like the Acorn Precision Glue or Fabric Tack or something like that to hold it together before you're going to sew it. Or a glue stick, applique glue stick, if you're gonna put an applique on it, that works really well also. And then when you're gonna sew it, you can use any kind of needle you want. I tend to use Bernina Universal Needles but if I'm using a thicker thread and I need a larger eye, then I'll go for uh, a top stitch needle. And you can see I'm out of top stitch needles now. Uh, size 80 or 90, I tend to go towards a 90 when I'm sewing with cork to allow for the thread to work through there uh, nicely. All right, um, other things. Once I've finished my project, what do I need to do to treat the edge? Uh, this one here, I've had this for about 
five years and I've never treated the edge. And you can see, I'm just getting a little bit of the fabric backing is kind of fraying there, but this is on my backpack every day that I take to work. So it is wearing very, very well. If you're worried about that fraying, there's a couple of things you can do. You can use um, paint, fabric paint to cover the edge. You can also cover the edge with any clear glue. So um, tonight I will treat the edges of my wallet with uh, clear glue, probably Fabri-Tac. You could also use Fray Check or Fray Block, whatever your favorite is. Just treat the edges and let it dry uh, overnight. So that's how you can treat the edges if you want to. If it's something that is going to be worn a lot, you know, have wear, you might want to treat the edges of it. All right. And then when it comes to embroidery, what do you need to know about embroidery? Guess what? I use an embroidery needle when I'm embroidering cork, or I sometimes will use a universal needle if that's what I have. Uh, you can't really hoop the cork fabric. It's too thick. It will not hoop underneath that inner hoop. So instead we're gonna use the floating method. That's how I did my, my wallet, is I put some sticky back stabilizer in my hoop. Today I chose OESD's Stable Stick Tearaway. So it's a tearaway stabilizer that has sticky on it. That's this paper um, sleeve is protecting the stabilizer. It's protecting it so well, I can't separate it to show you. But this is actually a tearaway stabilizer um, because I didn't really want to add bulk to my wallet. I just wanted to use a plain stabilizer and then um, tear away the excess. And the way that you use tear away stabilizer is you hoop it with that paper backing on, shiny side up, score the fabric, and then just remove the paper back. To reveal the sticky goodness underneath. And then I can place my cork piece in my hoop and I can embroider it. Uh, if you didn't have sticky back, you could hold it in place with tape. If I would suggest that you use OESD tearaway embroidery tape, it works great. It's low tack, so it doesn't uh, affect your project at all, but it holds it in place. So you can just use small pieces of tape to hold it in place. You don't have OESD embroidery tape. You know what you could use? Painter's tape. Yep, you could use low-tech painter's tape. And again, take small pieces of it and you could just stick it in your hoop if you had just regular stabilizer. So that'll work really well to hold it in place firmly so that you can embroider and have a really nice successful embroidery. Yeah, it is. This one is really sticky. I love that OESD one. So give it a try. Um, so I think those are my tips for using cork in a project. I really wanna thank my suppliers today. I've got cork from MM Cork Supply. They are amazing. Check them out. And of course the designs are by OESD Embroidery Online. If you have any more questions about sewing or embroidering with cork, feel free to drop me a line. At Bernita Canada, there is a contact us button or you can uh, ask your Bernina dealer for assistance, or you can go on MM Cork and see what their tips are. And also you can look at OESD, all of their projects that have cork designs. If you go into the sewing information page, you can see exactly how they do the project. Uh, even before you purchase the design, you can preview the sewing information and see exactly how it's done. So I encourage you to give cork a try. It's not just for wine, it's for sewing and embroidery as well. And I'll see you next time with some more great information on Bernina Besties. Happy stitching, everyone. Bye-bye.